your brothers and sisters, uh, if you would like to please uh, join me with this short Bible study. Let's go to Matthew chapter 27, reading from verse 50. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. Behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened. And many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. Let's pray. Father, we come before you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, your Son, Lord, through the blood of your Son. Father, we pray, open up the scripture to us, Lord, that we may understand your will, Lord that we may understand what happened on the cross and its application on our life. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, at the time of Jesus' death, there was a veil in the temple. The temple was still standing. Remember, the second temple uh, was torn approximately 70 uh, AD. And uh, the temple was still standing, there was still a veil, there was still a priesthood of Levites that were serving the temple. And uh, we know that in the temple there was the holiest of holies, the place where uh, the Ark of the Com Covenant was, where the priest had to come to uh, to sprinkle the mercy seat uh, for, uh, for sins. And if we just go back, if we see that uh, in the scripture there is this constant picture of the holiest place and... Uh, the picture of God's throne is the mercy seat here on earth, the Ark of the Covenant, where it was inside of the temple and before that at the tabernacle. And I want to take you now back to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 24. It's when Adam and Eve sinned against God and their uh, sin came into the world and death by sin. And in verse 24 we read, So he drove out the man talking about uh, God driving out man uh, from the Garden of Eden. And he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So, we know there were two trees in the Garden of Eden, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And when man uh, went into sin, disobeyed God, when Eve took the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, God didn't allow mankind to go and eat from the tree of life because that would mean that man would be doomed forever because they would have eternal life in sin they would they would be eternally doomed so god for protection he put cherubim at the garden of eden to guard god's presence as it were god's presence on the earth the garden of eden and now we read uh in Exodus chapter 26 where where the tabernacle was built where God would dwell amongst his people the people of Israel we read in chapter 26 the instructions of how how this tabernacle should be built and how the, the ark of the covenant should be made and uh, all of those uh, those ordinances that God gave to the children of Israel but we read in verse 31 that God instructed them to make a veil this was the veil that was torn, brothers and sisters. And this is why uh, I want to uh, share this with you because it uh, touched my heart when I was reading it. It says in verse 31, And thou shalt make a veil of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen of cunning work with cherubims shall it be made. Now, imagine yourself that there was this holiest place and that's why I put this picture. It's the best picture I could find. But there was this holiest place where the Ark of the Covenant was where the mercy seat was, where, where only a high priest co could come in that place because it was so holy, because God's presence was literally there. And the only thing that was between uh, man and God in that way was this veil. And on this veil there were cherubims. It says, you should make fine twined linen of cunning work. With cherubims shall it be made. Now, I see it as... On this picture that there was uh, this embroidment of cherubims on it and if we look this is a picture of garden of uh, of eden brothers and sisters that the cherubim uh, stood on the outside of eden to guard us from the presence of god to guard us from eternal life 
and his cherubims are here an image of that in the temple, guarding, as it were, the presence of God, the mercy seat. But what happened when Jesus Christ shed his blood on the cross when he died? We just read that in Matthew, in the book of Matthew, chapter chapter 27. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. So in the middle, it was rent. It was torn apart. Now imagine it was this when Jesus screamed out and he died. He yielded up the ghost. And then this, this, this veil, this picture of separation between man and God got torn in the middle. And these two cherubims that were on this veil a picture of cherubims guarding the Garden of Eden. They, as it were, they were they just stepped aside because it was torn in the middle. And the, the door was open for Jews and Gentiles to come into the presence of God through the blood of Jesus. We can come boldly to the throne of grace. What what a blessing, what a what a what a glorious work of God and what a perfect plan He has. And we can see that these foreshadowings of things to come are are so beautiful when we read the word of god we see how god knew the end from the beginning how he how he um, planned it all out so we can know his love for us so we can know how how much he is interested in our life and in us getting to know him he did everything brothers and sisters it's on us to to respond to the call of the lord to the call of god the veil is broken. We can come into the presence of God. Now, if, if you are not Christian and you're watching this video, there is a way that you can come to God, to the living God that created you and all things, through the blood of Jesus Christ. If you've put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, He paid for your sins. It says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 2, that He died for the sins of the world. He died for every single person. But you will only be forgiven if you put your faith in his atoning death on the cross. And you can do that today and have eternal life. But if you are a Christian, there is a way into the presence of God through the blood of Jesus Christ. It's not uh, based on what you do or what you do not do. It's based on the finished work of Christ. You can come to the holiest of holies because our high priest is the Lord Jesus Christ. And the veil is torn. And the cherubim stu stood aside and they welcome us in to the presence of God. And what a picture that is. Because when we come to him, we will be in his presence forever. But now by prayer, we can come to him. We can come and talk to the living God. So let us do that. Let us pray. Let us assemble ourselves together. Come together in prayer with brothers and sisters. As apostles did in the upper room. Let us seek the face of God in these last days. I pray this blesses you as it blessed me. And keep on reading and studying the word of God. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Shalom.